This is Michelle and I'm here today to do the tutorial for my 6x6 configurations album using the purebred line from Authentique. This is my second design team project for Country Craft Creations and I'm really excited to share this with you today. Um, I really wanted to focus this particular design um, using the 6x6 pattern paper that I was given. In the design team package, I was given 12x12s, but I was also given this designer pack, and I really wanted to concentrate on this and use pretty much just this. And that's, for the most part, what I did. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the reason why I'm calling this a configurations album is because we are going to create pages um, out of a couple different uh, folds and put them together in such a way to create this album. It will create flips and pockets and also the binding for the album. Um, you have seen the slideshow I um, put on a couple days ago. And let's get started. I used the um, seam binding, this beautiful seam binding for the closure. And I loved the colors so much I couldn't decide which one I wanted. So that's why I used all three. So what I ended up doing was when I did the cover, I put three pieces of seam binding underneath my double matted papers here and attached it and then could just tie it in a bow. So it makes a really nice fluffy bow when you tie it. And then on the cover, I did use a cut apart from the 12 by 12 paper collection that I had left over from a previous project. And I wanted to use that on the cover. This burlap doily, the flowers, and these little cute little paw print buttons are from my stash. And I just wanted to do kind of a nice simple cover. On the spine, I used some pieces of the pattern paper that I had left over. So I had this really beautiful dog paper. And then I had these um, strips here that were big enough. I'd used my paper punch, my favorite one, and I'll show you that one. This one, this one is my favorite paper punch. I use it all the time. Um, I use that to scallop the edges and then layered that to create the spine cover. And then I have these cute little dog bones in my stash. The stickers here that say my dog came um, with the paper collection that I was given. So that was a big um, sticker page that Authent Authentique, excuse me, had put together. And then the back I just kept simple. But again, I used the 6x6 six six papers for that. And I did use the brown artisan cardstock, and then I used some green artisan cardstock as well to do the double matting for the papers. I just wanted to bring out some of the colors. So um, that's kind of the outside of the album. And then on the inside, I did, um, you know, I was trying to just stick with the pattern papers and then a few pieces of cardstock. So I used brown cardstock primarily, but I used green. Um, as kind of an accent card stock, and that's what I also use to cover the inside. Um, I created a simple pocket for the inside cover, really easy to do. And then one of the mats, I cut down a little bit. It says, start each day with a wagging tail. And I just left that simple for a photograph. And then there's lots of more, there's lots more room for pictures and stuff like that in here. But let's quickly go through, I'll explain the pages, and then we'll go ahead and learn how to make them. So like I said, the binding is actually part of the page and how you put the pages together actually puts the whole five page assembly together. And I'll go through that with you. Um, the first page is simple and it's a pocket and I just used one of the large cut aparts. I did use one cut apart um, sheet for this book that was um, for the 12 by 12 papers. And I just made a, a small tag and I used stickers here to make the pull. And I have a tab punch here um, that I used to create the finger pull. So you didn't necessarily have to put this little tab on here because if you put the page in here, then you can just actually just pull it out. 
So when you turn the page, we're going to create this page, and it's going to have a flip pocket here. And in this flip pocket, I used one of the cardstock pieces, and I created um, a tag to put in there, and I just used some seam binding um, and an eyelet from my stash to do that. And then over here, I used some of the sticker pieces, and I backed them with cardstock, and I backed them in such a way so that you could put a picture underneath. And then you can also um, get that first um, pull out from this other side. And then here is a pocket page, and I took some of the smaller cut aparts that came with the six by six papers, and I just backed them on cardstock and put them in here, and you can see there's plenty of room to put more pictures. Now, what's special about this is that this page right here and this pocket here this this belongs to page one this is what attaches it to the page number two and I'm going to show you how to do that so that's what actually binds all of the pages together and then this binding strip here these half inch pieces here that comes with the page assembly and I know this is going to sound kind of confusing right now but when you see how it's done, it'll make um, a lot more sense. But anyway, um, the way that this book is put together is that the pages actually bind to each other. And once you put it all together, then you put it in the book and adhere it to the spine of the, the cover. So then this page here opens up like this. And then I used another cut apart here and I did it so that um, you could put a picture underneath. Um, I used some craft cardstock. Um, when I originally started doing the album, I did ivory. But as I was flipping through it before I put it down, I decided I didn't like the ivory. It was just too bright for these pic or particular colors of paper. So I switched to the craft and it worked out much better. So I liked that. And then over here, this particular page creates a pocket here and another pocket here that you could put mats in for four by three pictures. And then this page opens up. So it's kind of a half page. And you have another photo opportunity here. And again, another cut apart that um, you could put a picture underneath. So then that folds up. So this whole page assembly right here is one 12 by 12 piece of paper. This one here is one 12 by 12 piece of paper. Okay, so that's page assembly number two. And then page number uh, assembly, excuse me, number three is right here. And part of that is what creates this attachment for the back side of page two. And again, I just used a cut apart. This time I made a little card to go with it. I love that little image. Live, laugh, and bark. I love that. I used that image on the front of my canister, my pet treat canister. If you haven't seen that video, um, check that out. It's the one I did before this, the tutorial I did before this. It's really cute. So over here, this particular page assembly number three is um, configured a little bit different. It does have another center pocket. So you remember the first page had a top pocket, but this page has a side pocket. And again, I created two tags that go in there and use some eyelets from my um, collection or, you know, my own stash. And then I use some seam binding for that. And then I took one of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12 page and some craft paper. And I just um, did that. And then open it up in another cut apart here with this beautiful doggy. And then when you turn the page, you get the opposite over here. And again, this whole piece right here is one 12 by 12 piece of paper with just a couple simple scores and, and cuts. So then we get to the next page and we have a pocket here. And then we have, it opens up like this. Now you remember on the last page that we did, page number two, it had a pocket pocket and then it opened up like this. Well, this one has one pocket here and then when you open it up, the pocket is on the opposite on the inside. And then you have another photo mat that I put in here um, and a photo mat that I put under here. And then on this one, I did a strip across with one of the stickers to create two photo mat opportunities. And this is adhered so that the picture can go underneath that. And then on the back, again, is another little short pocket. And again, this is part of this page and that's what adheres it to this. And then this last page is just the same as the first page with a photo mat and then you turn it over. The difference here is that the pocket, I created a diagonal just to give it a little bit more, uh, you know, a different feeling 
but it's the same kind of thing. You could also put this pocket on the other side if you wanted to. You don't have to flip it to the back, but um, that's the way I did it. And then I created another pocket here and um, put a little photo mat in here. Um, on the spine of this book, I put patterned paper, which, you know, it shows right here, but it doesn't show a lot. So on my model that I'm going to show you, if I was to do this again, I would not have put pattern paper here at all. I would have just used solid cardstock because I ended up covering most of it up. And then I just used strips of some leftover paper from Authentique Spectrum line that I used in my previous project. Um, I had some strips left over and then I just covered the half inch spines here or the half inch gussets here. Okay, so that's kind of a run through, kind of an explanation of it. But let's get started and let's um, let's make a model of this book, and I'll show you how it all comes together. So the first things you're going to need um, to do are the covers, and we're going to do the traditional type cover. Um, you could make the spine or make the cover the new way that um, Tamara has been um, using. I have actually used it. I like it. I just didn't do it for this one. Um, so I need to, because I, you know what I do is like I haven't gotten into the habit of doing it. So I, you know, kind of get going and then I realize, oh, I could have used that new cover. So that's part of my problem is just I'm not in the habit of doing it. So if you wanted to do that, you definitely could do that but I didn't do it for this book so the first thing you're going to need are um, some cardstock and you're going to need two pieces one of them is going to be eight and a quarter by six and three quarters and one of them is going to be eight and a quarter by twelve and we're going to do the usual um, putting them together with a strip of score tape to make it long enough to accommodate what we're going to be doing all right, so I'm going to line this up on the bottom of my table here. I have a nice straight edge here. You can use your scoreboard um, to do that as well. Doesn't matter. Okay, then I'm going to grab my bone folder, and I'm just going to make sure that's stuck down really well. That seam will end up on the back cover of your album. And it will be covered up by patterned paper so you won't notice the difference, okay? And then you're going to grab your, the next thing you're going to grab are your um, chipboard pieces that you're going to need. And you're going to need two of them that are six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I've already prepared them with some double-sided adhes double adhesive. And you're going to need one that's six and a quarter by three and a quarter. That's going to be your spine. And you don't need two of those. You need one of those. Good gravy. We only need one spine. Okay, so one at six and a quarter by three and a quarter, and then two at six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then so we're gonna just lay them down and I'm gonna just go through this process. I have showed this process a lot, so we're gonna just kind of go through it pretty quickly, but um, it's pretty basic. I'm gonna have a one inch border all the way around, so I have one inch um, pieces of scrap um, chipboard that I use to help center. I got that idea from Tamara. It is brilliant. Before I was trying to lay down rulers and do all that stuff and this is just so much easier. So I keep these strips handy on my desk and then whenever I need them they're just right there and I don't have to worry about it and it really helps. So um, you can use that with both methods of covering your chipboard, that's for sure. So, then I'm gonna just lay this stick down again, make sure that's all lined up, and then put the spine piece down. And I had already put the quarter inch um, score tape on there, because you want that quarter inch space in between your chipboard pieces. And just line that up and then we will do the other side so I have done the other method of doing the chipboard um, wrapping it you know doing that um, easy wrap method and um, I do like it I really do like it I am just not in the habit of doing it and I just kind of get into the kind of the old way I do it I guess I should say this is a good way I like doing it this way I like both ways, but 
I think this is the one I'm used to used to using more than anything. So just lining that up, laying that down right next to the chipboard. So we're done with our cheater sticks. I'll put those away. I'll get rid of my scoreboard. And I'm going to, where's my big one here? I'm going to just, now you'll probably notice that this chipboard here looks a little bit different than the usual chipboard that I used. Um, this came off of the back of a really heavy duty paper pad that I had. Um, I had a couple of them really nice and thick. So I decided to save them and I love how, you know, so far they're working. So any, um, you know, uh, paper pad that you have that has nice thick backing, keep it because you can totally use those to wrap for album covers. Um, just like you can use uh, the backs of paper pads, you know, that you get with your paper collections. Um, you know, for lightweight chipboard, this heavyweight backing on these pads um, work really well. And I kind of go through a lot of them, especially since I've been on the design team, because I'm always taking notes and drawing diagrams and trying to write these tutorials and, you know, get everything all done. I go through them like crazy. So I just went around and just went over the edge here, just really, really gently, whoop, but um, you just want to train the paper to go the way you want it to go. And then I'm going to kind of help it along a little bit. Just gonna fold it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna grab my score tape again. And then I'm going to apply my score tape. So, like so. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off real quick. And the reason why is because when I go down the bottom here, I'm going to just kind of use my fingernail and tease that score tape into the groove so you don't get like a tape bridge. And then that way when you put the paper over, it will work a lot better. And then the other thing, I'm going to admit that this is a demo model kind of thing that I'm doing. Um, cause I'm, I already made the book and I don't have a second set of papers to totally redo the book. So I'm using, um, some different papers out of my stash. So it looks a little bit different. Um, I don't recommend using this paper, especially if you want an album that's going to, um, hold up. You really want to use artisan cardstock, which is what I used on the big project here. Okay. It does not bend. It does not rip. Um, or it does not bend. It doesn't rip. It doesn't um, do anything bad that, you know, you want your paper to stay intact. And this artisan cardstock definitely stays intact. So um, anyways, for, for the model here, we're going to do this. Um, but just so in case you just noticed that it wasn't, you know, didn't look quite like artisan cardstock, it's not. So I'm hoping for the best. It is supposed to be 80 pound. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really tried it yet, so we'll find out. Um, but it worked in the on the practice one that I did, so okay. Um, there we go. So this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to put the base together, but we're not going to be covering it with papers or anything like that because I just want to show you how to make the base. So then after you put this on... You're going to cut off the corners, leaving an eighth of an inch at least between the end of the cardstock and the chipboard. You guys have heard me talk about that before, and I know you've probably seen that before. And then what you're going to do is take off. Last night I broke off my thumbnail, so my, my tool isn't working very well. <laughs> All right use a different fingernail. I have some music on in the background in the living room for my doggies because, you know, they just sleep all day anyway, but they like to hear the music. It makes them calm. They're used to it. So if you hear the music, that's what's going on. Okay, so now since this paper is a little bit, um, well, a lot less unpredictable, a lot more unpredictable, that's what I should say, than um, artisan cardstock. 
I'm going to put a little line of glue just to make sure that it not only kind of helps kind of moisten the fibers so that they bend nicely, but it'll help things adhere nicer too. So I'm just going to, I just put a little bead of glue on the edge of that cardstock and then gently folded it over. Now I am using art glitter glue. Love art glitter glue. This stuff is amazing. It sticks everything and it dries pretty quickly, which is awesome, especially when you're crafting because I don't know about you. I don't like to wait. I like to like get going and do my thing and I don't want to wait for stuff to dry. Okay, so there's that. So then um, the corners here, I'm gonna do the little tuck nudge thing with my thumbnail and cover the ends of that cardstock. I'm just gonna just go in from the sides and just kind of tuck that in. And then I'm gonna add a bead of glue. And I'm gonna fold that over. And that creates a nice fold and it covers the corners of your cardstock nicely. I'm gonna do that again over here. One more time. And so far, this trick with the art glitter glue is working. So keep your fingers crossed that this works. <laughs> okay. So we did that, and then I'm just going to take my bone folder, and actually I'm going to take my bigger one because it'll be easier, and just go around and just make sure that everything is stuck down this way. And so far, so good. It looks like it's going to work. Okay, then I'm going to take my um, other bone folder here, and then I'm just going to tease the paper into here, and this is where... You can get in trouble. Just be gentle when you fold it up. And when you tease it down, don't get too crazy because you'll end up sawing it like a knife through a bread. So just be gentle and just kind of tease that into the spaces there and get that adhesive to stick, the score tape that you have down there. Okay. And then you can kind of there we go. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna do is cover this inside spine. Now, in the model here, or in the actual book I made, I covered it with pattern paper and you know I ended up covering up most of it, so that was kind of a waste of pattern paper. Um, so this time, I am going to do that with the same cardstock, and then that way I won't have to worry about it. So the cover for the inside spine is six and an eighth tall by six inches wide. You just need one of those. And I went ahead and put the adhesive um, double-sided tape on the back. And we're gonna make sure that we're even. Now the edges, you want it to go past the spine piece onto the covers about an inch or so, a little bit more is fine, um, because that's gonna get covered up with pattern paper. And so, um, cause we will take a, where did I put it? A piece of pattern paper and, you know, or a, a piece of, uh, cardstock, excuse me, it'll cover this up. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So <laughs> oh, my brain is a little bit toasty today. I haven't slept in a couple days. I've been having some trouble sleeping. So I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done on my day off. Okay. So I'm just gently sticking that down into the fold. All right. This is working out great. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so there is our base. All right, we don't want to get too crazy with folding it and all that because we don't want the paper to rip. So just a, a good little nudge, nudge. 
to make sure that everything's good. Now, um, the one thing I do want to let you know is that when you are making this album, um, before you put your matted, um, you know, your double matted cardstock on here, so you're going to get a piece of cardstock and then you're going to put your pattern paper over top of it, you're going to need to attach your ribbon for your closure. So, however, you want to do it. I used um, three strands of. I used three strands of seam binding and because I just couldn't decide which one I wanted so I decided I wanted all three and I just laid those down under here I put some score tape down and I can show you that right in the middle here and then I laid this the seam binding down onto that score tape and then I covered that with the cardstock and the patterned paper okay and that's how you attach the bindings all right, and I used about a little bit over a foot, I think, on each side, and then that way, when you tie it, you have a really, it ended up being a really pretty fluffy bow. And then the seam binding here, um, if you, I got it, this is from um, the Design Team Kit, this is from Country Craft Creations. If you take it and you wet it and you scrunch it, just scrunch it really good, and then let it dry, it makes this really beautiful crinkly effect and it just absolutely I think looks really pretty on the edge of that album so you can see that so that's how I did that and you will need to do that on both sides so don't forget to do that um, you definitely you don't have to do it if you don't want to but um, it sure is pretty and it looks it keeps the album nice and closed and you know it adds that pretty effect so you have your album um, cover that's how you do the cover okay so this piece right here will be the back because that's where the seam is okay so we're going to put this aside and we're going to work on our pages now i did make up a mock model of the pages and i tried to use some different colored cardstock to try to help explain this um, cause I know that a lot of people have had a hard time looking at the dark colors on these tutorials and figuring out how they go. So the first page that we're going to make is going to be this page and it's going to have that top pocket and when it opens up, now this will be different. Artisan cardstock is very, very, very heavy and I want you to use artisan cardstock for the life of your album. It's going to work out great. So we're going to do a little modification to this, but you're going to have a little pocket here and then you're going to have this attachment that will attach to the next page, which will be page two. Okay, so um, let's get started. Let's make those pages. And basically pages one and five are going to be the same. And you're going to need two pieces that are eight and a half by 12. And what we're going to do is create this particular Type of page so you're going to have a half inch gusset here and you're going to have this one and a half inch piece here and then on the back of this page half inch gusset this is that pocket piece this is that pocket piece that attaches it to the next page this one we'll um, deal with separately but um, we're going to make two of these super super simple on how to do it so you basically are going to just take your paper and you're going to put it in your scoreboard and you're going to do a couple little scores super super easy so eight and a half inch side up at the top it's 12 inches long so eight and a half by 12 and you're going to score at one and a half you're going to score at two and then you're going to score at eight okay so one and a half two and eight and then you're going to turn to the 12 inch side and you're going to score at six then what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors let me find my good scissors here that i like for this part and we're going to do some um, quick cuts here and the only thing you're going to need to do is you're going to cut up the score line here all the way to the six inch mark and then miter and miter to the score line on that side Okay, and then the next thing you're going to do is go to the side and you're going to cut at the score line, that six inch score line on the 12 inch side, and you're going to cut all the way through to the two inch mark. Okay, 
So you have those two scores. Then we're going to do some folding and make sure when you fold it that everything folds, you know, square. So fold and burnish. And then this little tab in here, fold and burnish. All right, so that tab will get glue and that will create the top loading pocket. So then these flaps here that we cut to the two inch mark, we're going to fold those and burnish. So this will create your half inch gusset and then your little one and a half inch piece that will adhere it to the next page. Okay, so you can kind of see it from the top side. So this will be your half inch gusset. And um, for the front of the album, this won't be needed. But for the back of the album, that's what's going to, or for the back of the page, I should say, that's going to attach it to the next page. So I'm just making sure, I'm trying to make sure I'm all square here. So, so if you look at it from the top, you should have the two half inch gussets. You should have this attachment here, this piece here, and then you'll have a pocket here. And then all you have to do is, on this page, is add a couple strips of glue. And what we're going to do is put a strip along the score line by that two inch score, and then we're gonna put it on the tab. Fold it over and burnish it down. Get my gauze here. Okay, so we make sure that our gussets aren't stuck together. You don't want that. You want the gussets to be free. So we're just gluing the pocket together, just like that. And then what I ended up doing was I went ahead and measured in the pocket, the other side, Michelle. So the page is um, six inches, so measure in, find your center point here. Okay, you can just make a little tick mark. And then I took my punch and centered it. And there you go. So that's gonna be our first page. Now it's also the same as our uh, fifth page. So again, we made all the scores, okay, and I'm just going to glue these together. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to do this. Then when you cut your pattern paper to cover this, the pattern papers will be five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And um, you'll just measure the center of that and then do the punch again, and then it will line up. however you want to do it. You don't even have to do the finger pull if you don't want to, okay? So we have just made pages one and five, okay? So this will be the first and the last, but we're gonna make the addition of the tag pocket for this. So for the tag pockets, you're gonna need two pieces and they are going to be uh, four and a half by 12. You'll need two of those. And when you do that, four and a half by 12, grab your scoreboard here and put it in your scoreboard and on the four and a half inch side you're just going to score at half an inch and at four inches and then you're going to turn it and you're going to score at six 
Okay. And then what you're going to do is we're going to make some cuts. So um, on the, the, the right side of the paper, some paper has a right and a left, or right and a left, a right and a wrong side with this paper. It does. It has like um, some, you know, texture on one side, but not so much on the other side. So if you have that kind of paper, um, do that. Artisan paper does not have that. Either side looks beautiful and it looks the same. And um, again, I do prefer using that. Um, this is, again, a tutorial model that I'm doing. So, um, you know, I wanted to do it to show you, you know, how to use this. I do encourage using artisan cardstock if you're going to make your photo album and you want it to really last and be beautiful because the papers, the artisan cardstock is just unbelievable. So I mitered these here and then I'm going to just cut this one out completely. And I'm just cutting along the seam line or the score line, the seam line. <laughs> Sound like I'm sewing. I got sewing on the brain too. And I don't know why. Oh, I think I do know why my husband wants me to make him a uh, tie-dye headband for his band. Okay, so you're going to have a piece that looks like this. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to fold on our score lines and we're going to burnish the two bottom ones. Okay, this is what's going to create your pocket. And then we'll fold them up at the score line here and make sure we're centered and we're square. And then we're going to burnish, all right? And then we're going to add a little bit of glue. So the two bottom tabs that we create are what's going to create the pocket. Just like that. Okay, and then you'll notice you have this other little tab hanging out the back. You're going to fold that the opposite direction towards the back of your pocket. This is what's going to adhere it to your page. So you've kind of got an all-in-one hinge with this pocket. Okay, just like that. Now you can do it both ways, you know, to make sure you've got a nice fold. Okay, so it'll swing nicely. Okay, so you have your pocket with your hinge to the back, right? That like that, and then um, before you put it on your book, it's a lot easier to do the punch now. So we're going to center this, and this pocket, this pocket is three and a half. So you're going to center it so where the center is right there in the middle, and the first one, we are going to do the punch. Okay, now take our page one. This one's going to go on the back of page one. So page one will go in the book like this. So the back will be here and we're just going to glue that hinge to the edge here so that it will flip out like that. Okay. Let me just add my glue. And then this will be covered up with pattern paper. And I'm going to line that up on the edge. And make sure I got a good stick. All right. So there you go. So that's the first page. All right. Now the second pocket, we did a diagonal um, deal to it. So what I did was I measured two inches down and made a little tick mark. And then I went into my, my paper cutter and I just cut that off. So I measured two inches down from the top. Woo, that was a good thing. That was a, that was a learning, um, learning moment. Make sure you have the top when you do this. Otherwise you're gonna cut the bottom off your pocket. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right guys? Okay, so two inches down from the top. Okay, got the top here, and I'm just going to line it up in my paper cutter corner to corner and cut it off. So I'll be right back with that. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. I don't know if you guys have seen these pens. They're friction pens by um, by Pilot, and these things are amazing. I love them. They are totally, like, they're erasable. So um, I use those a lot instead of pencil a lot of times because pencil doesn't sometimes tend to erase as well. I think. So anyway, um, so the back of page five goes here. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to add our glue. And do that. Set that down. Make sure it opens nicely. You want it to open nicely. So it doesn't compete with the edge of the page. And it closes and it's even with everything. Looking pretty good. Okay, so we have the pages one, pages five, and we have the two pocket variations, one with a diagonal and one with a punch, okay? So we're gonna set those aside. Now, the one thing I do need to let you know, um, you can make, when you make your own albums, these pages here have to be first and last and they have to be the ones that connect to other pages. I hope that makes sense. It's going to when we put these together because these pieces here are what's going to connect them to the other pages. Okay, so next page um, is the middle page. We have five pages, page three. Now we're gonna do this one a little bit different. The same score, but we're going to do a different way to fold it. So this one is 12 by 12 and we're going to, I already accidentally cut it. I was going to do it on camera. So I accidentally did that already. So we're just going to go through it as best we can. So it's 12 by 12 and you're going to score again, just like pages one and five at one and a half and at two, and you're going to score down at eight, but you'll notice I have these awesome two four inch flaps here. We're gonna use those. That's going to in make in our book, the third page of our book has these two awesome little flip outs and then it creates a middle pocket. So it's basically the same. We just used a little bit more paper um, and created a whole different look for this. So after you do those scores, then you're going to turn it and you're going to score down at six, okay? Then you're gonna take this out and you're going to fold it. And then one page will flip out this way. This little four inch page will flip out this way. Is it four inches? I think. Yeah, it is four inches, yeah. Um, and then you're gonna have your other two pieces that are your, your binding and the little pocket attachment. That's what I've been calling this, the pocket attachment, because it attaches to the other page, okay? So both sides has your half inch gusset and your pocket attachment, okay? So when you look at it from the top, you should have something that looks like this. So you've basically taken your paper, okay? So here's the front piece of the paper and after you've done your cuts, you've done the first cut to the two inch mark, you've done this cut just to the score line at eight inches here to create these two flaps. The six by six pages in the inside, that's what's gonna make your front and back page. And you're just gonna fold it, and then one goes to the front, one goes to the back, and then here are your attachments. So what you're going to need to do is we're gonna make this one a side pocket. So your tags will go in here, so you're gonna glue the top edge here and then down the side. And you're gonna go just to the score line by where your gusset's gonna be. And then a glue to the edge. Whoop. And then we're just gonna glue that down. And that's gonna create, some, create another type of pocket. So now basically out of the same type of score, you've got two completely different pages, okay? And that is 
that for that page. So now you should have something that is going to look like this. And it's going to have a nice pocket here for your tags. All right, so this one here is going to be page three. So we'll set this one aside, and now we'll make the two inner pages. So these are pages um, two and four. So these will go, these were, are gonna be the pages that will be attached to the other pages and we'll create the whole thing. So pages two and four are really fun to do. You just need two 12 by 12 pieces of paper and you are going to, let me show you this first. So the first fold, it opens like this and then you have a pocket here, a pocket here, and then this little flap here that creates this pocket opens up to create another page. All right, so this will be glued down here. So pocket, pocket, and then this will open up and then it folds and does that, okay? So um, I'll show you in the book. One of them will have a pocket on one side. So this is the page here. So you'll have this page, pocket, pocket, and then it opens up. And then the other way is just to simply flip the pocket on this little half page the other direction and make a pocket on the back. So we're gonna do the opposite of that, okay? So I've already done this one, but let's go through how to do this. Now this, is, this one can be a little tricky. So um, this is how we're going to score it because it has kind of um, some weird scores. It, it scores only, you know, let me, let me just show you, it'll make sense. So put it in at the 12 inch mark, and then the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is a six inch score all the way down, okay? All the way down. Then you're gonna turn it, and we're gonna do another six inch score, but you're only going to go to that six inch score line, okay? So we're dividing the page in half, okay, at six inches, and we're only gonna to go to that score line we just made. Then you're gonna turn it completely around. So now we've got the six inch score that we just made is on the bottom, only to that score line. And then on this side of the score line, we're gonna do four and a half, and we're gonna do it at nine, and you're only gonna go to that six inch score line. Okay, so let's go through this again. It's a little bit different. It doesn't go all the way through, except for the one first one. So the very first score line you're gonna do is down the entire six inch mark. Then you're gonna turn it to one of the sides and you're going to do it again at six inches, but you're gonna stop at that first inch line, or first six inch line. And you're gonna turn it around all the way so that that half page six inch mark is down at the bottom. And then you're gonna score at four and a half, only to the six inch line. And then at nine, only to that six inch line, okay? Then you're gonna take this out and we're gonna grab our scissors again. And, oops, hang on two seconds. And this page only requires one cut. So I know this is a little hard to see, but what you're going to do is you're gonna turn your paper so that your six inch square are here and then this side should have the two four and a half inch pieces and then the three inch piece here. You're going to cut up that middle six inch score that goes all the way up. We're gonna cut that all the way through to the very first four inch score that we did. So you're gonna have a piece that looks like this. I know this is hard to see. I'm trying, I'm trying, I have been, I gotta tell you, this is one of the hardest tutorials I've ever done, trying to figure out how I'm gonna show you guys and have it make sense. So um, <laughs> bear with me, I've been trying really, really hard. Okay, so you have your piece of paper and you want 
this fold at the bottom, so the fold that has the two four and a half inch panels and the three inch panel, and you want the six inch panels here. So we're going to fold this over, and this is going to create the page, just like that. Okay, so those are your two six inch pages. And then this guy will fold up, make sure that's square, and then we're going to accordion fold it like this. So what this is going to do for us is this is going to give us, when we glue it, a pocket here and a pocket here, and then an opening for a two page. The following page, so that this will be like page two, on page four, you're just simply, instead of accordioning, uh, instead of an accordion fold, you're just gonna flip this guy to the inside, and then this will give you the pocket here, a page, you open it up, you have a pocket here, and a page. Now, before you glue anything down, you really need to put your pattern paper down because there are no tabs to create the pockets. So you really need to um, put the pattern paper down first. I cannot stress this enough. Um, put your pattern paper down first um, on all of your pockets, even on um, these pages here. So this is, this is important for page two and four. So pages one, three, and five, you can go ahead and, and make the pockets. You don't have to worry about the um, pattern paper. But on pages two and four, you really have to put the pattern paper on first, okay? Because you're gonna glue these down here and create the page. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Um, so we have two of those, where'd my other one go? So we have the one page that will have the pocket on the front and then the page opening and then that and then we'll have this one that will open up like this and it'll have the pocket here and then it'll have the pocket here and then have a page here all right but just remember we have to put the pattern paper down first before we do any gluing on these okay one of my little even that up a little bit because it's sticking out it's bugging me okay so we have pages two and four. Now, the other thing too is that these pages really need to have their pattern paper on the fronts and the backs as well. So I guess the rule of thumb for this book is that have your pattern papers ready, have what you're gonna use, and go ahead and pattern paper all of this page, all of page two, all of page four. Then you can adhere it to the book, okay? If you do, glue everything down. I mean, it's not gonna ruin the whole project, but you won't be able to slip pattern paper under the edge here, and you will just have to cut a piece that will fit like the top of the pocket and not go like into the pocket. So if you're cool with that, you can go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and, and um, do the papers and then um, you know, glue the pockets and then put the pattern paper on later after you put the whole book together, all right? So, Pages two and four are right here. So we have our previous pages that we made. So we have page one, page two, page three, page four, and page five. Okay. So these are all going to go together just like that. So let's go through my little model here and I show you. So this yellow here represents page one. Okay, this tab here is going to adhere to the front of page two. Page two has the pocket with the page in the pocket and it folds over. Now, page three, this adheres to here and it becomes a pocket. Now, the, uh, here's the other thing too, another design tip. You do not have to use this as a pocket. If you wanted to just adhere this down and then cover this entire thing, with a piece of pattern paper, you totally could do that and leave out the pocket. Um, so there's nothing saying you can't do that and that would be another way to do this design, okay? So that's page two here. The orange represents page three, which has the flap on either side and the inside pocket here. Page three's little piece adheres to page four, 
which is the piece with the pocket and the page, okay? And then page five, it adheres to this page with this little pocket if you wanted, and then it has the diagonal flip pocket, okay? When you put these together, you're gluing this half inch edge to, whoop, excuse me, and there's your gusset right there. When you get done with this entire book, you're gonna have your gussets and you're gonna have your spine created. And then this just simply glues into the book. And that's what I mean by it creates its own binding. So let's do that. Um, I got my pages. Um, I did not get pattern paper to put on this, so I am just going to glue them since this is the model. But if you wanted pattern paper on this and you wanted to create a pocket, and you wanted the paper to go in the pocket, then you really need to paper pages two and four first so it'll look like that, okay? But for this um, design, we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to put some glue down on the three edges, and then I'm going to lay it down I got it the right way. Yep, I do. It's easier for me to see doing it this way. All right. And just glue that bad boy down. Okay, and then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to make sure that it's stuck really good. So now you can see I have page one and it's glued to page two. Page two will open up. Okay. So then we're going to do page three. We're going to glue that to the back side of page two. I'm going to do it the other way because I can't see. And I don't want to get my head in your way. So make sure everything's all squared up and lined up. Okay. Okay. And so on. So we're just gonna keep doing this. Let's see if I can do it. I'm trying to show you the easiest way. I mean, honestly, I know this is a little confusing, um, but once you get this down, it turns out to be a super, super cute little book. And it's really kind of cool how just a couple different folds gives you so many options. So then now that I, when I, you know, I didn't put pattern paper down. So when I do my pattern paper, I'll just cut it and it'll go to the edge of the pocket with a little bit of room. And then I'll put another piece of paper on the pocket, you know, and that'll be, that'll be super cute. So my book is adhered with my pages. And now I have, you can see, I have my gussets and everything ready to go. Okay. And my spine or my binding, I, I should say, okay? Now, um, with the artisan cardstock, folding this over, it was really super thick and it didn't work very well. Um, so what I ended up doing was, I just cut at the half inch mark 
the first and the last one off. Because we don't attach those to anything. If I can get it straight. I don't know why this tutorial is making me so nervous because I really was stressing about how I was going to show you how to do this. I mean, because it's just so cute when you get it done. All right, so I cut off the front and the back pieces. I cut them off with a score line. And then I'm going to grab my book wherever I put it. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay, so I grabbed my book, and you're basically just going to glue this to this. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue and I'm going to glue you need to try and make sure that the spines are all lined up and I can see that one of mine got off a little bit so this might be a little interesting but um, try to make sure that all your spines are lined up and then this just glues down into the middle of this book. And you're going to have about an eighth of an inch from the edge of where your spine is. Just like that. Lay it down flat. Okay. And then just be really gentle and kind of go down in between your pages and make sure you're adhered really well down there. And then um, my my recommendation is that you let this sit for a while before you really start playing with it. And just make sure that the glue sets really well. But once you get that glued down, then you're going to have your binding all complete. Your pages are in your book. And now your pages are ready to finish decorating. Okay? So, this is my 6x6 six six paper um, configuration. And then the other thing, um, let's see, I was going to show you which I think, no, I didn't make a model for, so let's just do it. All right, so pages two and four have another interesting way that you could play with them. I was gonna show you that and I totally skipped that part. So we're gonna make another one just for giggles while that um, glue is setting. Um, so pages two and four, this is the one where you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper and the first score is all the way down on the six inch mark, all the way down. And we're gonna turn it and we're gonna do a six inch mark just to the six inch score line, okay? And then we're going to turn it over so that that six inch score line is on the bottom here and we have our one that's all the way across here. We're gonna go at four and a half and we're gonna go at nine. Okay, and we're gonna do the same cut so we're going to cut all the way up to that first four and a half inch score. Okay, same cut, same scores, same cut. But I'm going to show you a different option. Ha! That's why I call them configurations because sometimes you can kind of make them go all over the place. So this one, what we're going to do is we're going to have our three scored pieces at the top. This is going to make our page, right? And we're gonna open it up and we're gonna bring this down from the top. And I didn't use this page in my book, but it is another option. So if you wanna play with that design, you can. So then fold that down and then accordion this, just like we did before, to either side, doesn't matter. All right, then. Here's what the cool thing is. Now this becomes a flip. This becomes something you can flip up. So you can have a pocket here, but then flip it up and have a page and a page here. 
or, and, 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 not or, um, and you can have the openings here as well, okay? And then again, you can fold this to either side and have the pocket on either side as you wish. Or the other thing too is you don't even have to make this a pocket. You could make this another kind of a, a full page spread. If you had a bigger piece of paper that you didn't want to cut up because you like the image so much, you could put it across this whole thing. So anyway, that is another option. So if you do it from the bottom, um, which is what we did uh, from the other side. So we went from the bottom and created you know, the fold that goes like this. We glued it together and made pockets, but then we also have a page. But if you do it from the top, and I would encourage the fold to be on the outside of that flip because it folds easier, but then you have another, another flip. So that's just another option um, that you can have, okay? So back to our book. Um, Art Glitter Goose, that's pretty good. So then just, I went through and I just made sure that everything was stuck down and tried to burnish really well. Make sure we're in the gussets. Okay, and our book is done, okay, except for putting on your beautiful papers and um, decorating to your heart's content. So that's my configuration album. It is fun. It doesn't require a whole lot of paper. I think I have a list here. Where did I put my list? I have a list. My notes. I'll show you my notes. That's why I go through a lot of paper. Um, let's see. I used on this book right here, and I have this in the description as well um, because I put a list of what I used. So it used um, eight brown cardstock, artisan cardstock. It used three craft cardstock and one green cardstock. I will have um, the dimensions for all the stuff that you need um, in the description. Um, obviously glue, some seam binding. I used four eyelets for the tags. The tags came from the leftovers from making the cover. And you need, um, of course, a couple pieces of cardstock or a uh, chipboard, hard chipboard to make the base. But anyways, this is the album, my configuration album. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it did make sense. Um, again, I was stressing about this because I was just trying so hard to figure out how to best show you how this goes together. Um, and I think by using, I did this before, by using the multicolored um, pages, it kind of helps show page one. Here's page two with the little mini flap fold. Page three, how they attach to the pages and create this whole binding system. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching. And um, I'll be back soon with my third tutorial using Authentique's uh, Purebred line. Please go to Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com. Get your artisan cardstock, get your papers, get your art glitter glue, your seam binding, all this stuff. And um, let's make an album. Talk to you guys later. Have a really good day. Bye-bye.